All right, I think we figured it out. Karen um, thought we were on a Zoom, so that's my fault. All right, she's gonna request to join once I see her. Then we're gonna jam. There we are, I see you, request to join. Okay, yes. <laughs> awesome. It's super confusing. Again, typically we're on Zoom. That, you know, makes sense. Hi there. Hello, hello. Hi, Hi Karen. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Sorry. We figured it out. I was like, oh, no, she's on Zoom. I saw that, like, pop up on my notification. I'm like, yeah, we probably should explain this a little better with the Instagram Live. So thanks for being here. Of course. Yes. yes. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. So I've given the audience a little bit of background about who you are. Just, you know, we've worked together for on and off years, mm -hmm. like over a decade. Yeah. You've been with me through every evolution of what was Ignite Girls, then became Elevate with Carrie. Yep. You've been on retreats, we've done one-on-one, -on -one, we've done virtual things. So I want you to introduce who you are, and then I want to jam on the retreat a little bit. Sure. Cool. Yeah. Um, so as Carrie mentioned, I'm Karen Acker, and I've had the privilege of being with Carrie through her evolution, and frankly, through my evolution in the last uh, decade. And so I'm happy to talk about my experience and answer any questions that anyone might have. Yeah. What is it that you do in the world, if you don't mind sharing? Sure. Um, so I'm in software sales. So I essentially help uh, organizations deliver their business outcomes through the use of technology. Yeah. And Karen is a badass <laughs> at what she does. She's like Thank top you. executive, um, you know, high achiever. Um, and she's also a mom of two girls. Yes. I talked about the girls earlier. Um, how did you know, you know, cause we had spent a lot of time doing, you know, zoom stuff or virtual consults and, and mm -hmm. services. How did you know a retreat was what was next for you? Yeah. So I think through the virtual work, there was definitely uh, breakthroughs, but I was at a place, you know, post COVID post having two kids where I was really craving more of a human connection. And so the retreat was an interesting opportunity to get out of my normal, you know, day-to-day -day environment and really immerse myself uh, in the work. So that mm -hmm. was attractive for me. Yeah. There's nothing like a hug in real life, yes. you know, and that in-person connection and us riding in the golf cart together, yes. looking at cows at nine o'clock at night on our last retreat. Yes. And why are they awake? That was so funny. I know. Uh, top, top, like top moment for sure. Yes. Um, how did you, how did you overcome, or maybe it wasn't a challenge for you, but I know I find a lot of women that are moms. How did you overcome like the conversation maybe in your head of, okay, it's okay to take time off. It's okay to step away from my family and my girls, even though they're so little to, to pour into myself. Like, was that a thing? Did that come up for you? Did you feel guilty? How did you move through that? Yeah. So I think that certainly has been a thing for me um, in the past. I think when I got to the point of the retreat, I had already experienced you know, kind of the value coming out on the other side when you do invest in yourself and take that time away. So that was an easier bridge for me to to cross um, mm -hmm. at that point in time. But I definitely at other stages wrestled with, you know, investing in myself versus the family, but it really is true. I think when you invest in yourself first, you just are able to show up um, in a more authentic, restful, peaceful place. Um, so that was kind of how I navigated that. Plus mm -hmm. I'm fortunate, I have a very solid support system and husband at home. So it's, it's easier for me to step away, I think in, in some regards. Yeah, totally. Yeah, sometimes women, they'll say like, well, I just, I feel so bad leaving my kids behind, or I'm not sure that like now is the time. Mm -hmm. But I but I often find that those are the people that end up being like, oh, the, I'll do it tomorrow's or I'll mm -hmm. do, I'll come one day, but one day never happens. Mm -hmm. One day never becomes that day. Yeah. So it's like, how do you know the time? How do you know that this is the retreat or the time to do it? You know? Right, right. Yeah, for sure. So what would you say? in your words happens at a leadership retreat like this where we're connecting and we're in this like high vibe you know environment what happens behind the curtain at a retreat like this i mean a lot of things happen <laughs> where to start um well first i think you do an incredible job of curating not only like a luxurious high-end experience but like a safe place to be um and i think the people that 
um, are attracted to work with you. Like I felt very comfortable and safe, even though I knew some of these women for five minutes. Um, it was clear that we were all there with, you know, pure intentions and really wanting to advance our lives in whatever that meant for each of us. And so that was something that was pleasantly surprising to me, just how quickly you could connect with other people. Um, understanding that in a lot of ways we're all struggling with the same challenges they just manifest a little bit differently in our lives um so that was a really cool takeaway mm -hmm. for me and then i think like i said coming out of your day-to-day -day environment it almost allowed you to look at things with a different perspective and you know for me i had a lot of breakthroughs um as you know just around things that historically held me back but i think when you're just stuck in the normal full four walls that you operate in it's easy to just keep moving forward without making changes. And it was almost like you could come up for a breath of fresh air at mm. the retreat. Mm. Was there something specific that stands out for you that was like a shift, a breakthrough, something that was like, whoa? Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of a lot of the stuff that I experienced um, just around like limiting beliefs and things that don't necessarily have to be true for me anymore. And, you know, I know the retreat I attended to had a big theme around the masks that we wear and the way that we mm -hmm. show up, you know, because we think, or we've been conditioned to believe that's who we need to be in the world. And so I think releasing a lot of that um, has allowed me to continue to up level, you know, two years later. And I think it's really interesting. You're very intentional about where you host your retreats. And so there was obviously a big element of, you know, being outside and being in nature. And I think, that's not necessarily something that I was good at practicing previously. Mm -hmm. And so I think there's a lot of power in, in that too. Yeah. I, I, I believe truly to the environment mm -hmm. matters. It can elevate you. It has a vibration, a frequency. Mm -hmm. This was a more relaxed, luxurious space that we went to, um, you know, and then the, the one, one we're doing in Grenada will be uh, really elevated and very exclusive, but, this one was so beautiful and peaceful mm -hmm. and expansive, you know, it was, it was a fun environment. Yeah. Um, in your mind, what was, what was, some, what were some of the results that you experienced because you decided to come to the retreat? Like what happens when you get home? You know, mm -hmm. like what kind of results do you experience? Do you so, see this show up in tangible ways in your life? Yeah, for me, for sure. I mean, I've seen it show up financially. I've seen it show up physically, um, just in terms of my health and overall well-being. Um, and then I've seen it show up in, um, I don't know how else to articulate this other than just in the vibration that I'm operating in. Like it's less about this panicked urgency or less about, you know, striving for performance because of worth. It's more like striving for those things because now I'm, I'm enjoying those in the moment and the journey. Um, and so I would say those are like the top three. I love me. that. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. What was one of your favorite exercises that we did? I love, oh, there were a lot. I loved the breath work mm -hmm. in the circle in the mm -hmm. morning. I loved all the morning activities, actually, um, yeah. which if any of my friends are watching this, they're probably laughing because they're like, you're not a morning person. But at the retreats, I am. <laughs> uh, so the morning breath work circle and then the labyrinth was for sure my oh. favorite. That one was really cool and so powerful for you. Um, yeah. Do you wanna share a little bit more about your personal experience with that? Sure, so the retreat that I was on there was a sunrise labyrinth journey and the whole concept of a labyrinth is, you know, there's many, I think it's, there's, there's one, there's many points of entry, but like there's not all the same path mm -hmm. to get to the center. And so, you know, we all go into the labyrinth at the same time and you know, I see everyone kind of zigging and zagging. And before I know it, I'm at the center. And I'm like, this cannot be, <laughs> like, I must have misstepped. Like, something has to have happened. Um, and so I'm standing in the center with the guide. And I'm just, like, looking at her, like, I don't know what happened. And she was like, I mean, you made it here. Like, it's cool. Like, just hang out until the rest <laughs> of us can get here. And, like, she could tell I was getting anxious about how could this be. And so she was like, I mean, if you want, go back out and do it again. Like, it's okay. And so, again, just like this permission that there were no rules and you could just show up as you are. Mm -hmm. So I, I go back to the start of the labyrinth and go back in. And before I know it, I've gone through 
the maze and I'm back in the center and everyone else is still walking around. None of us have and gotten into the center still. None of You've been in twice. <laughs> yes, none of you. And so when I get back to the center, the, um, the guide was like, what was your intention before you came into the labyrinth? Because you had a set intentions about, you know, what we wanted or just, you know, in general intentions for the day. And my intention was I asked God, like, let me know that I'm on the right path in terms, I was wrestling with a lot of things personally and professionally at that time. Um, and so it was just this beautiful, you know, moment where again, I think for me, something that I had to get over was like not being able to trust myself or my intuition or that when things happen, like this is the divine path. And so that was just a very wild experience for me. <laughs> we had a good, good laugh because you were frustrated yeah. you were first. Meanwhile, I walked literally the entire yes. labyrinth, whatever <laughs> path I chose. And this one was like, it had four quadrants. So you would weave in, get close to the center. And I thought, I'm looking at you in the center. I'm like, oh, I'll be there soon. <laughs> And then yeah. it weaves you back out and it kept doing that literally four times. And I'm like, I went home and I'm like, I feel like I walked the whole damn labyrinth. Yes. And sure enough, I get an aerial view from Google and I trace my path and I had walked the entire thing. Yes. So it was just, everyone had such a different journey. That was really cool. Same labyrinth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's exactly, I think how retreats are, you know, we show up with an intention. We show up in the same room. Um, we're all there together and everyone comes away with what they came for. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Anything else that you feel called to share with someone listening that is on the fence, has watched me from afar, knows me online, but is maybe intimidated, nervous, not sure they're ready for this kind of room, not sure they're ready for coaching with me, not sure they're, I don't know, just feeling called, but not, they're still kind of on the fence. They're not quite sure if this is the right retreat. Yeah, I would echo kind of what we, I think we started the conversation in this way that it's like, there's never a perfect time to do anything yeah. in life. And if there is some part of you that resonates with what you're offering with these retreats, I would say go for it and invest in yourself because I have seen, you know, a tenfold retreat. do it but it's magical and it truly is like a safe space and so I remember being on the flight to the retreat being like oh my god like am I really doing this like what the fuck? um so there is always that little like anxious nervous energy yeah. but it was almost like as soon as I stepped foot like in the house you know in the space it was like what was I worried about mm -hmm. you know just totally surrendering to to your point whatever it is that you're looking to get out of it yeah and just being open open to what is mm. revealed to you <laughs> yeah it, that's why we're there i mean i i think some of the best transformations happen too when they're like i just went into it completely open with like mm -hmm. whatever is meant to come for me will come um you know when i was getting nervous about it or trying to like over do too much due diligence mm -hmm. and homework around like what this is that's yeah. where i was getting uh-huh <laughs> yeah, I am not, awesome. I'm huh? not a I'm a, not a glamorous guest. My like AirPods are falling out. I can't figure <laughs> out a join. I'm just I'm keeping it real. It's all, it's all good. <laughs> Listen, I've had I did a live on one of my master class things two times ago, and my nephew walked through the background naked. He had to go potty. He's like four, and my sister didn't know he was in the frame. So I'm at my aunt's house, like doing this live, and out of the corner of my eye, I'm like. <gasps> Oh, Kieran and his little tush is hanging out. Just and he's like, you know, in the background, I'm like, you know what? This is just real life. I'm yeah. Yeah. Laughing because he's <laughs> half naked, but you know, life. It's funny. Mm -hmm. Well, thanks, Karen, for your insights, for your wisdom, for your time. Thanks for hanging with me on from Zoom to Instagram <laughs> and all the technical stuff. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Um, and Thank you for just sharing what you came away with and putting it in your words because someone somewhere probably needed that message. Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Well, I'll see you soon. Right. Bye. Have a good day. Bye. Love you. Bye.